Welcome back. We are now going to complete our discussion of the animations menu. And if we place our cursor where we have our animations, you'll notice that the animation menu is then going to be visible. And one of the things that you can do is you can determine that your animations will start not necessarily on a click, but either with the previous animation or right after the previous animation. And basically what you're doing is you are setting the animations in motion when you do this. And when we set animations in motion, we need to determine how long the animation is going to take as well as what will happen between animations. So we can set that in motion also. So now let's take a look at what this animation set will look like during an actual PowerPoint presentation. So in order to do that, we're going to go to our slideshow. We're then going to go to this panel from the beginning, and then we're going to swap out our presenter view. So now we have what the PowerPoint is actually going to look like. And what you're going to notice is that when we set the presentation in motion, that all of the animations appear all at once. And basically what we've done is we've set up the animations to occur with the previous animation. And so you'll notice now that all of the numbers have turned to zero. Now what we can also do again is we can set them so that they come after the previous one. And so now let's take a look to see what will actually happen. So again, in order to do that, we're going to go to our slideshow. We're then going to go to the beginning. And then we're going to swap out the view so that we can see it happen. And as you can see, the animations are happening automatically one after the other, given the delay. But in order to retain the full control over your animations, you'll want to make sure that you do them with the click. Now what you'll notice is that what we need to do is we need to go back to our animations, we need to touch on the cursor, and then we need to set these animations to occur after the specific click. And we can do that most effectively by just making sure that we turn the animations off, then we can place our cursor again, and then we can set our animations again to go according to the order that we want them to. Now again, you'll notice then that all of these subpoints are going to occur with the number nine animation. If we want these to occur in succession, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure to change this to on a specific click. And what that will do is that will renumber all of the other animations so that they happen in succession. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video.